So here's a, a, uh, uh, an interesting uh, fact. The well-ordering property and the principle of induction are, in fact, equivalent. Surprise, perhaps. Okay, we'll take take uh, uh, either one of these. We'll, we'll take the we'll take since most of you were happier with this. We'll take the well-ordering principle to to be well-ordering property to be axiomatic. Okay. Okay. Let me, in fact, prove one of these directions, and then maybe later on, if there's time, I'll prove the other direction. Okay. So here's uh, a proof that, if you like, the well-ordering principle implies the principle of induction. Okay. So um, to, make every, to make most of you happy here, I'm going to prove that if you assume these two properties about S, then it must be the natural numbers. Would you agree that's my, that's my um, burden? Okay. And I can assume that Every non-empty subset of N has a least element. Okay, so this is how it's going to begin. So let's, uh, let's, let's begin this proof. So suppose you have a prop, uh, S with the, the given properties. Well, either S is N, which is what we want to show, right? Or it's not, and then maybe we could get a contradiction, right? So let's do this by contradiction. Usually you clue the reader that you are going to do a proof by contradiction. Suppose S uh, exists uh, with the given uh, properties in the principle of induction, but S, suppose S is not the natural numbers. Everybody agree this is how I would begin a proof by contradiction. Okay. Where's the contradiction going to come? Where's the contradiction going to come? Maybe I will uh, do some scratch work here, which does not belong in your notes, but just we're just going to think about this a little bit. So we have some mysterious, prop, uh, some mysterious subset of the natural numbers. Natural numbers maybe begin like this. They don't maybe begin like this. They do begin like this. And S has a curious property that um, it's not everything, OK? But it is. It is, does look like that picture. It's just not everything. So it, it does look like it have those conditions, A and condition B. So maybe, uh, could S look something like this picture? No, why not? OK, because one is in it. So we're just getting a feeling for why this is going to be true. So one is in it. And maybe, let's say, two is in it also. Uh, yes, Emil? Oh, uh, well, I, we are assuming that because that's, I'm assuming the hypotheses of this, okay. of this, uh, okay. so the, con the question was why does S have to be subset of N? Because that's part of the hypothesis, okay? What we want to show is that, in fact, it's everything. So could S be this picture? Why not? And, and don't tell me by induction or the principle of induction. We're trying to prove that. 2 is an S, then 3 is an S, OK. Mm, sure, OK, so maybe, so now you're saying this has to be in, right? And then you're saying because of that, this has to be in. This has to, OK, et cetera, et cetera. But that feels to me like, that feels to me like I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to appeal to this over and over and over and over and over again. Somehow that feels unsatisfying to me, right? It, because in some sense, you're, that's what induction says. But can you do this in a way that, that I don't have to appeal to this, this step over and over again? Steve? OK, question was, could you look at everything that's not in S and start there? 
I like that idea, Steve. I like that idea. Why do I like that idea? I like it because it uh, allows me to get a handle on something very specific where I can hope to get a contradiction without having to appeal to property B over and over and over again. Okay? Okay, so let's do that. Let's give it a name. Then let's let uh, A uh, be uh, S, my, uh, sorry, N minus S. What can you say about, okay, I haven't finished this sentence because normally I would write let A equal N minus S, but I'm, I'm going to make my writing a little more streamlined by defining this in the course of saying something else. Then A, let A be S, N minus S. What can I say about the subset A? <gasps> yes, thank you. This is the subset A. There might be other things, right? A has a smallest element. I heard many of you say that. Maybe some other stuff here. Interesting, yes. Yeah, so we are appealing to the well-ordering principle. That's a nice thing, right? This is, this is why I won't have to, to bootstrap B over and over and over again, right? I'm appealing to something that will make my life a lot easier. Then A, wh which I'm defining to be N minus S, and I might tell the reader this, has a least element by the well-ordering principle. And it's courtesy to tell or remind the reader of this if they, if they don't see it, because isn't this a crucial ingredient? OK, good. Now what? What about this least element? In this picture, that least element is here. So what? Oh, interesting. So you're saying, take this and look at its predecessor. It's not going to be an A. Why? That's the smallest. Good. Okay, okay, excellent. So, so the, uh, the comment was, look at the predecessor of this least element. That is not an A. But that, therefore, it must be in S. But S, by property B, uh, uh, has the property that th its successor must be in S. But then that would contradict the fact that it's an A. And we're done. Do you see that we didn't need to hop over and over and over again, we, we use the well-ordering principle here to get directly to the crux of the matter. So then A has a least element by well-ordering principle, comma, call it a name. Uh, let's give it a name. How about uh, N? Now, what did you say about N? Whatever this thing is, it's N. Look at N minus 1. OK. Now, we have to be a little careful here. How do you know that this thing has a predecessor, n minus 1? Excellent. So we have to at least be sure that n isn't 1. But we know n isn't 1 because 1 is in s and therefore is not in a. OK, so call it an n. And so here, this is something to remind the reader. Notice. Notice n is bigger than 1 because 1 is in s. So 1 is not in a by property a, if you want to remind the reader. Everybody happy with that? n is bigger than 1. Good. So uh, what do you want to look at now? We want to look at n minus 1. What's another way?